Hey, so, I was doing a quick mental update for you guys, but I got sidetracked, and instead of just making it a 20-minute video about something most of you guys won't care about, because it's just me bitching, I decided to make it into a two-part video. So, I am going to talk about my own body fat composition and why I think we all should um, be a little bit more objective with it and not compare ourselves to the top 1% that you'd see on Instagram because one, they may be fake naturals. Two, most of us will never look like that. So just hear me out. You can call me fat in the comments. I do not care, but I'm just trying to make things more, uh, let's, how would you say this? More realistic for you guys and what you should expect as a healthy young male, okay? Talked about peak male physique. Oh, and this is something I noticed is like, as I get more burnt out, I get more reflexive and emotional, not just speaking of the anger, but like I made a short the other day about my progress and, you know, physical fitness and how I've lost this weight. I said I was going to try to gain weight again without much context because, you know, I have a minute to talk and people are like, you need to lose weight too before you bulk again. First, you don't know my body, but I get it. Second, what I'm really intending on doing is putting on another 10 pounds over the next year. Like 6 to 12 months, I'm going to try to put on 10 more pounds of lean mass. So that's about 1 to 2 pounds a month. I'm not trying to like bulk. I'm trying to just eat athletically. A guy my size, 6'1", 220. 15 to 18 percent body fat i'm saying 18 for the people that don't see my legs as a valid source of body fat composition <laughs> anyway um i need i need a lot of food to stay um feeling good so i'm eating 4,000 calories a day um high carb high protein low fat no sugar or seldom sugar there's still some sugar in my diet like um I have Cinnamon Toast Crunch before my workout because it's fast, quick carbs. I work out at like 7 in the morning. So I don't have much time to digest a big stack of potatoes, for example. Uh, we'll see how that goes. But this is just something I've noticed is that we need to stop comparing to the top, tippy top, top for everyone, including yourself. So like... I say I am 15% body fat. I know I don't look like the standard 15% body fat, but guys, my legs <laughs> literally have serrations going up them when I walk, not flex, walk. I still have the pouch on my midsection and I have a bit of a pouch on my lower back, but for me, between the body fat calipers, the Navy method, and my uh, smart scale I have. I know they're not all accurate, but none of them have me above 16% body fat. So, like, to me, it just makes more sense to go off that data because it's mostly impartial than going off of someone's potentially partial data, right? Because you're comparing to the top 1% on Instagram. Probably even the top 1% of the 1% on Instagram. So we're talking, like, Michael Thurston, Matt Does Fitness, who say they're 15% body fat, when they're absolutely shredded. Well, guys, first, I'm not really going to... I am going to throw shade. They're fake naturals. That's I, There's no way around it, okay? Um, they say they're this heavy set body fat compared to what they actually are to make it seem more reasonable, like, oh, they just carry their weight well. But for someone that actually does carry their weight well, meaning, like, I can put on 225 and look pretty decent it's like 225 like i could put on 10 to 20 pounds of fat and look pretty decent still these guys would be phenomenal what if they were able to like let's say put on 30 pounds of fat and still keep their abs right because that would mean they are about 20 percent body fat if we go off of what they are saying they're 215 ish 
body fat or 215 weight if they get up to 230 say that's mostly fat and they still kept their abs they look fucking gigantic that's not the case they would if they're saying they're 15 percent, they would start being watered down anyway i'm i'm kind of rambling on that point but what i'm saying is is like just like there's so many different body types there's so many different factors for um body fat disposition and you know how it looks as your phenotype saying someone is 15 percent just by looks is not a necessarily the best thing and i know greg duchette thinks that's the only way but there's context there's always context and i just want more people to consider especially in self-improvement the context it's editor bd so i was just going through this spending way too much time on this as per usual and i noticed something pretty fucking interesting at least in my opinion, you guys probably don't give two shits. So I say I'm about 15% body fat. People disagree. And that's fine. I don't care. Um, but what I'm arguing is, is that people do not have reasonable expectations of body fat perception. And I use Michael Thurston and Matt Does Fitness as an example. I said they were fake natties. Looking at Thurston, maybe not uh matt probably anyway so this is me right here obviously hopefully you can tell the face is mine this is matt this is michael now we all roughly weigh the same and we all roughly have the same height so i say i'm 6'1 like pretty sure i am at least at this point mike and uh, that's Mike, that's Matt, six one, six foot. But notice the difference first in the arm length. My elbows come down much farther than Matt's, and still farther more than Michael's. So that's what we mean by like long muscle bellies and long limbs. So my arms might actually be the same size of them, but when they do, you know, the front double bicep, they're going to have much bigger peaks than me. Meanwhile, mine kind of just look like sausages. <laughs> same thing with their forearms. Their forearms are much longer. Actually, I don't even know. Maybe I just have long-ass arms, and now I'm realizing it. But my arm goes below, or my wrist starts where his fingers start. So... I'd probably have two to three inches longer in his wingspan, right? So just based off that, his biceps are going to look bigger. His forearms are going to look bigger compared to me. But we are the same body weight. Then let's move to the elephant in the room, the midsection. Now, I know I have a very shitty midsection. It's mostly genetics. I have never had abs even at my leanest with basketball. And like I had literally veins in my shoulders and veins in my arms literally nothing but that little bump right here in my abs this is about 165 back when i was 18 now i am about 220 at least this morning before that photo was a little less as you can see i still have that one big ass line just like the rock i'm not saying i'm as big as the rock we just have shitty ab genetics together the rock is probably about uh 12 to 13 percent body fat usually for me i say i'm about 15 but just based off of my abs you could easily say 18 another important difference is that first they have ab separation in general <laughs> that's huge for body fat phenotype but another thing is is look how much bigger my obliques are compared to theirs and same with rib cage if we are just looking at it um, objectively my rib cage starts here ends here his starts here and then it's his obliques actually start to come in mine fan out which makes it appear like fat it's just not that pretty <laughs> um and then if we talk about legs my legs are longer if we're just looking off knee length so i don't know if they are lying about their height it's possible. I What I did was I based it off the size of my head. Granted, I have a relatively big head, but <laughs> I'm assuming if we're both six feet tall, 
our heads are going to be roughly the same size. So I just lined up our chins and then where our hairlines would start. And then that's how I scaled it. But um, if you notice, their quads kind of bulge out a little more. And now that's their excuse is like, oh, we're 15% body fat, but we carry it all in our upper thighs. Uh, you can see it a little bit on Matt, but to me, it's just the shape of their legs. So I would say Matt's probably about 10% here. Michael's probably about 12 to 13. He has much better genetics in general. Um, not saying that Matt doesn't have phenomenal genetics, but like if we're talking like body fat composition, Michael, it's just like you don't get much better than this. The only thing you would hope for if we're talking like bodybuilding wise is better oblique insertions. But like for 99.99999% of men, they would die to have that type of waistline to shoulder ratio. Speaking of which, I would actually say I am bigger shoulder-wise than them, except since I am wider, those shoulders have to cover more, or my deltoids have to cover more bone, therefore they don't get that nice protrusion. Like, I have a little one, but um, it's it's not phenomenal. And, like, that's why I'm saying, like, I, if I want to look freaky like them, I'm not saying I necessarily want to, I'm going to burp. If I want to look freaky like them, I need to put on at least 10 more pounds. And due to my genetics, I would have to lose at least 5 more pounds of fat. So, we're talking 230, 12-ish um, percent body fat if I want to compete with them. Uh, if we assume that I'm 15%, based off of my own relatively impartial calculations that what I have. But like I said, I'm I would say Matt's more likely 10, Michael's more likely 12, but what do I know? I'm just a guy bitching about body fat. Anyway, to me it was just interesting because while I don't have great aesthetics, I do have like just a huge fucking frame if we're considering these guys who are considered big dudes and that's me not even at my final form i have a lot longer to go if i want to reach my phys physical peak but i don't know if that's in my best interest and that's something i've been struggling with for six months as i continue getting bigger muscle wise um there's going to be a certain point where, A, I would have to be on more anabolic agents than I'm comfortable with. B, there's a good chance that I would not be able to keep it all when I come off because there's only so much muscle mass you can contain. And that's another reason why I kind of think these guys are fake naturals because they look like this year fucking round, right? Um, my body fat has always fluctuated when I was natural. So... <laughs> I don't know, maybe they're more honed in than me. But it could also just be genetics, like I said. But, again, what what I'm getting at is if you're going to be comparing to the cream of the crop, you need to make sure that you understand the complete context. So, like, now that I understand the context between me and these two gentlemen here, I would say they have a better body for physique, but... I always knew that I wasn't going to be a physique competitor or fitness model. So just putting it into context has helped me a lot get past this, if that makes sense. Okay, back to the regular video, hopefully. So like, I'm pretty impartial, right? You've seen that I measure my penis <laughs> online pretty consistently each way. I just don't understand why people can't give me the benefit of the doubt when I talk about body fat the same way. Like, okay, I'm sorry. It was just one of those little pet peeves things. I've It always bothers me just because it's something that I kind of pride myself on. It's like how hard I work on it out in the gym despite being like this weird meso-ectomorph comp, not ectomorph, meso-endomorph combo. Like, I can put on a lot of mass. It's just not going to look that pretty. Um... That I am still relatively lean for what my genetics are. 
And then it's like, whatever, bro, you're still not in the fitness range. It's just annoying, you know? Um, not that I take it personally. I know that Instagram and everything else is making it harder to be... Or harder to understand reasonable expectations. Especially if you started, like, doing bodybuilding and stuff at the young age. Speaking of which, the um, local high school, they all follow the same workout routine. It's pretty fucking funny. Because they all kind of just, like, walk around like, um physique bros so really wide shoulders really big arms and then like no chest and back development anyway <laughs> okay i'm done roasting them um all right i'm definitely rambling at this point it's 13 minutes on this uh video so i'm gonna cut some of that out probably and we'll go from there i will have actual content for you guys soon but for now patience and temperance is all i'm asking all right later guys